Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Before we get started, I would like to go over a few instructions so you know how to participate in today's events. As an attendee, you have joined this webinar in muted or in listen only mode by default. You will, however, be able to submit text questions by typing your questions into the chat section of the control panel. Uh, besides the presenter, of uh, 2024 are one. I have a few colleagues who will answer incoming questions as we go. Uh, so if uh, people like John Pedersen and Christian Mocano is answering uh, what you type in, uh, it's it's uh, clever representatives of uh, continuous software. My name is Kim Dalsgaard, uh, Kim Dalsgaard Christensen. I am the Chief Commercial Officer at Continuous Software. And with me today, I have uh, Mikkel uh, Reisbøl, uh, who is the Senior Solution Specialist on Dom Capture, who will go through the new version. All our solutions are available on Microsoft App Source. And uh, at the 2nd of April, all solutions were updated to new version 20. 24 R1, supporting also the new Business Central uh, 2024 Wave 1. Within the next month, we will release extensions as well, supporting on-premises BC versions two years back, plus the BC 14, the last FOP version. For notice, next version, uh, version 2024 R2, will be the last version where we include BC 14 FOP objects. Current status is that this continuous community now is supported by no less than 26,000 live installations within more than 45 countries and used all over the world. We are humbled and honored by the confidence and trust that lies in this number. A big thank you both to our partners and customers. Besides what we just released, rest of the year will be a super exciting year. We are going to introduce a new app, Continue Finance, called the Swiss Army Knife for the demanding finance department. Especially the German participants will recognize the features within, since they are modules known from OP+, that is our banking app, especially within the DAC region. Now, these features will be available for the rest of the world. Keep an eye on announcements coming up later this month. In October, when we release 2024 R2, we will introduce Continuous Banking that will replace existing banking solutions, Continuous Payment Management, OP Plus, and Dynamic Pay. All the best elements from current three solutions, just in one. Much more about this when we get closer. If you follow announcements from Continua, we are going to make our efforts to the climate challenges. ESG is a big thing, so to bring a true value-adding solution for SMB companies, it will take time. But this spring or early summer, we are going to make our first steps, offering a solution for companies to make a reliable carbon report based on emission conversion factors from organizations approved by the authorities, only by Continia and everything built inside Business Central. And with those announcements, I think I will hand over the screen and the sound to Mikkel. Here, here you go, Mikkel. Thanks a lot, Kim. Let me try to uh, switch the screen sharing to my screen. There should be a nice image. Yes, you are. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. And thank you all for joining today. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to go through. Uh, I hope you are sitting well and comfortable because uh, we're going to look at some uh, great stuff that will blow you back today. Let me um, start by introducing uh, myself. Kim did a fine job. Say a few words about me. I'm the solution specialist for uh, Dumb Capture, seated in Copenhagen, Denmark. 
and I have the honor today of walking you through uh, many of the new features. If you're interested in uh, seeing what is released, please go to Continuum Docs and look up the uh, detailed change log for the DOM Capture 2024 R1. Here you'll find the, the latest and greatest about the, the solution features being released. Let's um, jump into the show and take a look at the long list of changes and new features in the solution. First of all, we support, of course, BC 14, 22, 23, 24, as announced by Kim. And uh, you can also do direct upgrade from uh, DC 8, down capture 8, all the way up to from 8 to 12 to uh, the newest version. As always, we add several events and uh, more extensive external functions. That's probably more for the developers uh, uh, being present here today. Uh, but in general, we also enhance the performance. And I point out three areas here, the, the dominant journal and uh, when exporting users. And there's a new thing about NAUMZ, Australia, New Zealand data center, for speeding up the um, experience of OCR in their region. And then the web portal for approving documents has also got a, a bit of a, not a makeover, but a few things were added there. Jumping over to general application. The first one says version a number update as a check mark next to it, meaning that I'll go into details about this later on. So let's skip that for, for now and uh, keep looking down the list. User experience has been uh, enhanced in several areas. Let me point out the arrow key navigation in the document journal and document card is really cool now, so you can easily navigate around and do your modifications uh, in a better way than before. So um, that one I like particularly. Then you can add attachments to uh, GL and purchase uh, journals, uh, just like we know from the purchase invoices. You can do that on, on posted invoices. That is also possible now. Tooltips have been uh, uh, updated in several places. More teaching tips added to make it easier for you to start using the solution. And uh, migrating from on-premises to online is made even easier. So that's uh, quite Good, if you want to move from on-premises to online, this is uh, done in one go, more or less. A new area in Business Central, digital vouchers, has been uh, introduced, and we're going to look at that, uh, how it works together with Dumber Capture. New area data maintenance from uh, our side. How do we delete or um, delete data, also related to the GDPR? <clears throat> And talking about GDPR, we have removed a column in a page to ensure that uh, you don't uh, get to see um, the user ID unless you really uh, have the rights to do so. And um, that is a minor change, but it's uh, still important. Then uh, the last check mark in the list here, document control log, way to proactive monitoring your, your documents, whether they have been um, uh, tampered with, if somebody has have changed uh, uh, the the attachments, we can go in and take a look at that, and we're going to do that later. Then we add support for the Microsoft Swiss app QR bill management app that is uh, available for PC Central. So if you have that, uh, then it, everything is much easier now when you register uh, Swiss uh, uh, invoices that have a QR code. And also if you use the binary streams multi-entity management that is also now supported by um, Continue and Dumb Capture, uh, and all that you can read more about in our uh, docs section in the internet. Let's move on to documents and templates. There's a lot of things going on here. General recognition improvement for the AI and also the vendor creation has also been modified to prioritize certain addresses over others. The e-documents, you probably heard about that in some newsletters or from our homepage. This is something that we're going to take a deep look into. Project has been uh, enhanced. There's been a job number renamed by Microsoft to project number. We also follow that, so the templates have been updated to handle that. Better messaging and comments and Secure Archive now supports also GL and purchase journals. The Secure Archive, you know the area where we keep track of what has been changed and added in case you need to document the uh, if anything has been uh, modified after posting of your invoices. Furthermore, here for the document templates, better user experience in those areas, more messages that you can configure, 
And then the amount distribution codes are now available on document lines. Speaking about document lines, we can hide and show recognized documents uh, when we do our um, line recognition in order to easily find lines that need our attention. And then the big one here, AI enhanced line recognition, the last one in the list, is something we're also going to look at. We have more in the list, that's great. Purchase documents, the date time column has uh, been added to the log summary, and you can also look forward to seeing the delivery note registration for purchase order, a new baby we have included. Purchase contracts got a not a overhaul, but there's a lot of things added and changed in the in the uh, purchase contracts. General enhancements for the portal, and we've added an end date. Um, and North America is also supported now by purchase contracts. The three last one we're going to look at: how to uh, add an extra comment line, or talk about the administrator permission set that's been added, and also the variable invoice amount distribution, a new way of Registering invoices to make it faster and better, but more about that later. Look at the last column here, document approval, general enhancement to the approval part. Also, the automated consecutive approval means that you can uh, you don't have to approve the same document twice if you're both approving it on your own behalf, but also for others uh, through shared approving, so much smoother now. And the web pool portal now uh, shows a cross-solution overview. So let's say you have expense management documents and dump capture documents in the same uh, approval portal, same page, same company, then you will easily see uh, which uh, documents are to be approved by you. And that's a good overview now. And then we have the order receipt matching, also a few uh, enhancements to that process. Currency rounding has been used, and a, it says here, a better comment messaging when it comes to match uh, handling. That was a lot to remember. You get the slides after the show, don't worry. You also get a, a copy of the recording so you can review everything that I show and say. So this is what we're going to look at today. We have um, uh, around 50 items mentioned here. I'll be going to look at 10 of them in the next one and a half hour, so approximately. Let's, uh, well, why don't we get started and uh, dig in. First of all, I want to talk about the general application and have these four items to go through. Version number update, the latest release 2024, has been updated to the internal version number 24, as you can see here. In the latest release, the previous release, it was 12. So we have doubled the number, so we get twice as good a solution, you could say. But it's actually to make it more simplified for you, uh, customers and partners, to know which Dumber Capture solution matches which Business Center solution. So with Business Center 24, we have released Dumber Capture 24, and they match perfectly perfectly together, and therefore you know what to install and what to use with your Business Central version in the future. Let's move on to the next subject, which is digital vouchers. You probably know that with the Business Central 23.2, a, a new feature, digital vouchers, was introduced by Microsoft, allowing us to um, ensure that we have um, documentation for our posted entries. Dumb Capture hooks into this, and uh, we can now ensure you then when you register a document, when you post a Dumb Capture document, it will automatically uh, hook on to the Enforce Digital Voucher and uh, store the documents together with the Business Central Digital Vouchers, uh, other data that we have. So how does it work? Well, pretty simple. You register the document and automatically a, a um, Digital voucher is created, and all your attachments, like the primary document and drag and drop attachments, are put into this digital voucher and stored in PC Central standard um, functionality. If you want to, you could include purchase allocations to the digital voucher. It's a simple setup, uh, but it's optional uh, regardless of which localization you are running. So let's take a, a short look on how this is enabled. 
in a, in a business center, 23.2 or NUMA, this is automatically enabled. When these two entries, these setup pages have been configured, the digital voucher setup and the digital voucher entry setup as well. Then you'll go into your demo capture setup and uh, perhaps activate the create for um, purchase allocations as I've done here in my example, but I can clearly see in my demo capture setup that this is enabled in PC Central and therefore demo capture hooks into that. No need to do anything else than simply check that it's, it's configured. You can do that through demo capture. Otherwise, uh, we can guide you to setting it up. However, there are some special conditions for Denmark that by 1st of July this year, um, customers will have the digital voucher automatically in, uh, enforced, meaning that customers on version 23.2 or newer and having a production environment in cloud uh, are uh, in, um, automatically activated by Microsoft, which is, results in dumb capture. Naturally, also automatically includes documents into the digital vouchers from that day and forward. What if um, I'm not on a uh, PC Central version that has uh, digital vouchers available? Well, you can still activate our part of the uh, storing system, guaranteeing that you have attachments on your posted entries simply by going to the Domicator setup and activate this check for attachments before posting of a purchase document. Then this will ensure you that you get a notification in case a document is missing. And uh, please note that uh, this is only applied to Business Central on-premises versions that are from 23.1 or earlier. Because from 23.1 and uh, forward, it is included in the Business Central solution. Moving on to the document control log, a new thing introduced to Dharma Capture, extending the secure archive. What is this document control log? Well, as mentioned, it extends the secure archive with some extra checks that make sure that we see things in good time, see the issues that might occur in our uh, solution in good time in our archive. It will highlight documents that has a failed file hash, the checksum, uh, and also if a, an attachment has been deleted, we will go and notify that to you. Those error-prone documents, you can reconcile and put in a check mark, kind of, and say, these are okay, I checked it, it's okay that the file was deleted or was replaced, kind of, then we will be able to reconcile the list of error-prone documents. From the page, from the document control log, you can go to related information, such as find related entries, uh, action, use that to get a full view of all the um, transactions involved in this entry, or go to, to, to the document log summary to see uh, all the different steps the document went through uh, during the registration and import and all that. And let me see, we should um, have a column more here, yes. So what do you gain from this? Of course, you have less manual document review due to the control log notifies you. And um, all those failed documents are being highlighted very easily. So it enhances your security. You know exactly which documents to look at and also ensures that your archive has a reliable structure that nobody has played around with it um, without you knowing it. So the data stored in your secure archive are secure. Let's take a look at the um, document control log in I'm going to capture business central. Look for the document control log or bookmark it as I did, and you'll get into the nice list of documents that have been looked at the last time. I, when I ran the perform documents check, you can see that we found two that were okay and one that is highlighted red with a notification that we added an attachment between approval and posting. So it's not a big issue, but still the approval was not based on all the documentation that was available. If I want to uh, check for new issues, simply run the perform document check. 
put up your filter, press OK, and this will then run through all the documents that you have, all the entries, and we have an estimated end time that will be in a few seconds. There we are. And ooh, another uh, issue came up here. This one, one uh, or more files have been deleted. Hmm, let's see this one. What is this all about? We go in and take a look at the log summary to see what went on. And um, uh, there's been, uh, is this the right one? Look at? No, it's not. Making, click on the right line and then click document log summary. There we are. So there we have like a one primary document that was imported and registered. And uh, there we are. And then we have some confirmation coming in that was hmm, deleted here. You can see that. And we have a project plan that was just added. So this confirmation has been deleted, but it is it is still present. So I could click on show file to look at this. And let's take a look. It sees here this is a auto confirmation from yeah, from 22, that's quite old. It's probably the reason why it's deleted. It doesn't belong in this place. It's it's an old document because this is a brand new one from 24. So yeah, it makes sense to delete this. And I would therefore go back and say this is OK and do a reconcile. So now it's no longer marked as an, an error document, an error point one. It has been reconciled by me today and this time. And through this, you get a good overview. You can mark those. Of Look at those documents that have been marked with um, uh, an, an issue. Go in and uh, do the reconcile. And if you want to do the undo, undo of reconciliation also to make it pop up again as an error prone document. Yes. Move on to the data maintenance. You know, using Dharma Capture over a, a number of years, you will generate a lot of data, a lot of OCR files, a lot of records being stored in your uh, database and tables, taking up space and perhaps slowing the system a bit. Let's um, let's see what this data maintenance can do. We have two steps. We have a deletion of OCR records, those recognized data, you know, and then we have a possibility to purge GDPR related data, meaning data that are uh, needed to be deleted based on um, due to the have a per personal character, and uh, there for that we have uh, two actions in our uh, DOM capture setup. Why would you delete these uh, DOM capture data? Well, first of all, re removing these uh, old data will improve your performance in, in general in your DOM capture in your database, and removing TDPR. Uh, is uh, something that uh, GDPR related data, I must say, is um, due to legislation or other laws locally that uh, you need to um, fulfill. And therefore, we have included this process. Looking at the data maintenance, the uh, base data, you could say the OCR data, we have uh, added a field for handling this. How many years do we like to keep those data? And uh, we have a currently a minimum value of two years, so you cannot delete data that is younger than two years. And we talk about fiscal years, the closed ones. So this one uh, will uh, remove all your um, uh, OCR uh, records in the table called document word, which is a table that contains all the OCR, all the words from your PDF files, and it will currently remove uh, some captions from the document value to save um, um, valuable space in your database, and also some AI data tables. But only for the documents older than the retention period specified, as this says here. And what does this deleting of uh, documents and not documents, but records in my table, what does it do to my documents? Well, first of all, we have better performance when we import new documents that are to be recognized. It goes way faster. And also the search speed for the more recent documents that we have will be uh, speeded up uh, significantly. But there's always a but. There's a downside to this, meaning that if you delete historical uh, OCR data, you will be have less chance of easily finding your documents through the document search action in uh, Dharma Capture. So consider uh, what to lead to delete and when to do it. And you can read way more about this in the Continue Docs.
When it comes to the GDPR, we also have a specific retention period also in years, and we have put in a minimum required value for five years. You, if you wish, you can put in 10 years or 20 years, that's up, up to you, but we have a minimum requirement uh, hard-coded, which is five years. And when you run this GDPR uh, data maintenance, it deletes, as it says here, all domain capture related uh, data for the registered and posted documents that, of course, are older than the GDPR period specified. The GDPR also, uh, the GDPR maintenance process also looks at other places in our business center that allow document deletion before date, you have in the purchase and paperless setup page. And we also look at the minimum archive period in the secure archive. So you can see more about this in Virginia Docs. And of course, a quick demonstration of how this works. So let's go into the um, document capture setup and look at the retention period for OCR data and the GDPR uh, retention period as well. It says five and six, and have my my SQL archive set to five year here as well. So that's kind of fine. Um, let's go out and take a look at a document. We have a document search. I bookmark it up here, and let's look up a document called one two three four five and five zero one. This document. So looking through my document using the invoice number, I'm able to find this. And um, it could also look like warehouse. Should also find the document plus some more. But uh, let's see what happens when I uh, delete these dates. And I'm going to um, capture again and say I want to run my data maintenance. And based on the change period specified, it says you do want to delete all data from this date. And oh, hold on. Yes, please do that. Let's see what happens. Deleting here. Yes, number of documents with red data removed is two. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at our uh, document search and see if I can find my. And for some, oh yeah, stupid me. Should be this one I'm looking for. No, it's not, Miguel, come on. Good example I came up with here. Uh, give me a second. Is it one of those days? Is it Monday today or is it just my environment playing with me? One second. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong document. I don't have the right value here with me right now. I'm looking at the wrong one. Sorry. So it was supposed to show only one document when I search for warehouse, and that's uh, that's my bad. Let's uh, try the other one then, which is called the GDPR maintenance. And uh, if I go into my uh, document journal, we should be able to see that I have. I really hope that I typed in the right values today. So if we go in here and take a look at my registered document, I have a, a not publishers down here, which is posted in 2015, as you can see here, it's the invoice date. So now I want to flush this one. Let's get back to the setup and try running this and do like functions and run the GDPR maintenance. Where we delete the documents and everything. This is actually wrong. Wrong, I see. This is the wrong date. Now I know why. Um, why don't I change this to a five here? That's live demo. Like it is. Oh, you can review yeah, and let's try it again here. So run and say run TDPR. No, yeah. I'm misreading this. I'm totally confused now. Sorry. Didn't like when things uh, mess up, but that's how it is today. Uh, it's still okay. Let's just do this deletion of the GDPR and see that document does uh, disappear. And in order to make sure that you no, don't by accident go in and uh, actually this, you need to confirm a second time. So let's go in and delete some documents and we have deleted some documents and let's see. Ready to register, go into my purchase category, look at the registered document and we should see that uh, my 
third not publisher document is gone. I don't have my invoice called 999 just before it is. This is the this is posted in 23 and this is posted in 123. So my document from 2015 has been deleted as requested by me running the deletion action. Oh, great, thanks. Let's switch to a uh, purchase contract area. I have some uh, news in this area too. Let's see what we have. We have an automatic invoice comma line, it says here. You know that today when you register an invoice linked to a, a purchase contract, you get a comment line, a general comment line that contains the contract number. But now you can add a, another um, comment line, which includes um, either the um, invoice recognized uh, posting description or the contract description. So let's take a look at this, how we set it up. Simply go into the purchase contract, you want to uh, have a specific uh, posting description and set up the highlighted area here in the bottom right corner to create a posting description and choose whether to use the posting description from the recognized document or from the contract. So you can have this combination saying if it is present in the recognition, use it. Otherwise, take it from the contract. And you can read uh, way more about this in the Continue Docs. With the release of uh, Domain Capture 24, we have added a uh, permission set called CDC PC Admin for replacing the purchase contract administrator field that we have in the continuous user setup. Meaning that users that are assigned this uh, permission set can do the review process, start the review, or return to review, or finish review, or cancel review, use those actions. And um, when you upgrade to the latest version of Dharma Capture, you have to go in and adjust these users to have this permission set instead of the uh, administrator uh, check mark because that has have been has been removed. Now. Not a new feature, you could say, but it's a very important uh, information for you that uh, are using the purchase contract to go in and do the necessary configuration uh, after the update. Then we have a uh, different thing, but also in the purchase contract area, uh, it's about the invoice amounts when handling uh, invoices that has a changing amount from time to time. You know that we are subscriptions might change or your phone bills might go up and down and and for handling that, we have uh, introduced a way to distribute the contract, uh, sorry, the invoice amounts um, according to the contract accounts and amounts. So, how does this this work? Simply go to the Dom Capture setup and activate the switch distribute document amount, which will then um, automatically do the distribution. And For new installations, this uh, setup will be activated by default, but for existing uh, users upgrading, you have to go in and set this, uh, activate this in case you want to use it. The way it works is that uh, the document that we recognize, the header amount, will then be distributed across the contract lines that has the price type variable amounts. For contract lines having fixed amounts, we will take the contract amount and use that. Which means that you would have an invoice with um, that is linked to a contract with both types. You get uh, the fixed amount always from the contract, and you will have the the remaining amount from the invoice, meaning the invoice amount deducted the uh, fixed amount from the contract, being distributed across the variable uh, amount lines ensuring that we get the full amount from the invoice uh, applied correctly in the traded uh, purchase invoice when raised on. And this saves you a lot of time and make sure that you have the right amounts and you don't need to sit and check the invoice and contracts that often because this is handled automatically.
Let me see what do we have here. Next step is purchase documents, one single item, register and post delivery notes. With the purchase order category, we now have the possibility to register uh, vendor delivery notes, vendor, vendor shipments, and um, that enables us to do automated registration of what is to be received for our purchase orders, our items. Simply update quantity to receive the field on the purchase order, and if you want to, you can also post the receipt on the purchase order in the same process. Which means you save time, of course, you don't have to click around and do multiple actions, simply just register the document or auto-register it. And of course, the, your inventory bit will be more ac accurate due to the reception of your items is handled uh, in due time. In uh, So the orders are made ready for um, are posting the receipt when the goods come into the warehouse. Let's uh, take a look at this in our document journal. So going into our purchase order category. Here I have one document from White World Importers that is a delivery confirmation. You can see that here. It says here to the right. And um, and we also see that the the document has been recognized as a receipt, not an order. Now we have the document type receipt also available here on the purchase order category. Let's take a look at the template cards to see what has been added in here. Focusing on the purchase order section, we have a order registration step one and two. We know that from previously, but now we have a receipt step where we can update the order or do nothing uh, in case you don't want to to include that for this template. And then we can uh, also do a post the receipt as mentioned, and if you want to post the receipt and the invoice. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, looking at the right column, we have uh, also the line matching being added here. So I can match, make this purchase order category match the delivery note lines to the purchase order, ensuring that we update the right uh, order lines, of course, based on the same principles that we have in the purchase invoice order match functionality from the purchase order category. Looks quite uh, familiar, this place. I've configured my template to look at the order number always, and the item number always, and if we have the unit cost, please look up this too and use it for, for linking the recognized lines to the right order lines. Of course, you know you don't always have the unit cost present. You might just have the quantity or the item number. Uh, but in this case, I have my unit price also. Let's uh, try out this um, order match process. Match lines, new action added here. And then we have our familiar view, our order matching page, where I have a list of order lines and my document lines recognized. And as you can see here, I have recognized that one and one and one and five and five are to be uh, registered to the order. And those are the quantities found over here. Currently, nothing is matched. Uh, but if I look into my order list, we can see that I do have a, a order number matching the one that is recognized 10, 60, 15, where uh, there are these outstanding quantities. We can also quickly see that uh, we have already received six and four, but none have been invoiced yet. So what do I have to do here? Yeah, um, why don't we um, click on perform match? That's the easiest um, step to do. And then we have the lines being linked together. All my all recognized lines are now matched, it says here. Uh, and we can see that we will update match a quantity on our uh, order when register in this document. So let's uh, go back and do a registration of this little beauty. Give me a second for the machine to wake up and do the registration. There we are. And we can see that we have the full quantity that we ordered here, the already 
received quantity and the next one to be received are the three times one and two times five that was stated in the delivery note. So when the goods come in to the warehouse, I can simply press post and receive on this one. If the goods were already received, I could have uh, set up the template to auto post the reception of these quantities. Very simple, easy, straightforward, re reusing a um, existing category that we all are already familiar with in document capture. Now to the area about documents and templates. We have two items we have to look at here, the AI enhanced line recognition and the continuous e-documents. I will start with uh, AI enhanced line recognition and show you a few things in here. So with Doma Capture, we have uh, introduced AI recognition and uh, we have improved that building more on, on that foundation, meaning that we can now, you can now in, in your line recognition capture more line content than ever. Please note that some of the features are only available for those that are on a cloud OCR with the AI recognition enabled. I will show you how to see that later on, but um, let's uh, take a look at those um, options that we have. For the cloud OCR with AI, you get an AI based assistant as it says here that lets you know when uh, you should do something to your recognition, meaning that the AI has figured out that the structure of the document um, uh, is supported by one or, uh, or other dummy ca capture recognition processes uh, features. So we get notifications at the top of the page, helping you with recognizing the document. A new thing that we, is possible is we can combine the AI recognition with manual capture, something that was limited in version 12 of dummy capture, but now you can go in and click around at the same time as you use the AI recognized lines. For those customers not yet on the cloud OCR with AI recognition, you will be gradually moved to that service. You know, those features will be introduced to your cloud OCR and uh, that will ha happen over the next three months. Please read more about these details on Continue Docs. For all users, those that have AI capabilities, but also those that are on older OCR versions, uh, there's been a good number of improvements into the line recognition area. So let's take a look. First of all, you can add and remove line fields in the Dormant Card page without the need for reopening the page. That's quite nice. I've been looking forward to that for, for the whole release period and uh, it speeds up my processing uh, a great deal. Then we can capture lines, document lines, you could say invoice lines that, that go across, the, across multiple document rows. So in the invoice, PDF invoice, you have like five lines where things are scattered all around, but now I'm gonna catch see this as one line section. Quite cool, we're going to see that in a, in a moment. Then we can capture column-wise uh, those uh, values that are not necessarily on the same line due to the uh, number two item in the list. So we can span with the rows and then the column caption will know to look further down or a bit above to find the values that are connected to the item number, you would say. And then we can use field, use field captions on a line level. So I can look horizontal using captions. We're going to see that too, how that works. So not only color marking, but also row marking using captions in a, in a line uh, recognition. And then we could also skip the captions and just click around and say, I want this value here and this value here. And then we would grab those and remember where it was found. So we can capture line values uh, even without a caption. Well, what if I don't capture value? What can I do then? Yeah, then we have some options here to handle those where you can 
reuse a previous recognized value or have a fixed value filled in in case you want to have a specific value when a recognized one is not available. And for those uh, who are a bit more hardcore, probably some consultants, you can use regular expressions to go in and identify a portion of a data field and say, I only want, uh, let's say, the date of this long text string. Uh, you know, when we have a long text string with that are not separated by space, uh, or even though it was, the uh, dummy capture captures an area and takes everything that is within this area. But now we can say, look at this area, but only take the date, only take the amount, or only take this particular sentence that start with this word uh, and leave out other parts of the data. Um, this is a bit more hardcore, you could say, but it's available if you want to try it out. One thing that is uh, worth remembering and that you need to know is that this should replace custom extensions such as the advanced line recognition you, uh, some of you might have found on GitHub. Um, this is uh, now built in Dharma Capture a standard supported by Dharma Capture, not the advanced line recognition from GitHub. We have built something that replaces this and um, should make you able to recognize any document without adding further customization to your Business Central or Dharma Capture. So let me see um, how far did I go with my presentation? I need to do some demonstration, of course. There we are. Let's look at uh, the purchase category and um, and uh, look at some documents. I have this one from Not Publishers, which is a uh, kind of interesting one because I have, as you can see, an item number, three description lines, kind of, but price and quantity are also here on two different levels. Have a my order number up here, and yeah, it's all kind of mixed together. So. Um, Let's uh, go to the document card and uh, and try recognizing some lines. So first of all, I wanted to uh, share with you how can I see that uh, that uh, I have AI, the, AI, the recognized line. If it says A up, up here, then the AI is uh, available to you. If um, it's not available, then you cannot use AI for recognition. You don't have it in your in your uh, document capture OCR data. But uh, let's see, if I go to manual here, what will happen? So that would be like clicking around, like in the old days, and oh, at the top, I get two suggestions. Let's see those. So I went to manual, but wait a second, I want to do things manually, and then double capture tells me, no, 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 you should do something else. Go in and use the AI, or if you are continuing with the manual, you might consider disabling the requirement for field number. Mm. Well, why don't we try the AI straight away? That is kind of... Uh, the way to go. I could activate it here, or I could simply go back and say, uh, let's change it here. Applying these suggestions will then um, be uh, possible to undo those later on if you want to. But uh, let's just run the AI. That's uh, that's the fun part here. So what did we get? We we got uh, like uh, the item number here with a description with hey, a generous uh, AI that offers uh, more text lines. Uh, we're going to look at that later on. Quantity was not recognized. It was calculated, it says down here. So hmm, the AI couldn't figure out where the quantity was, but it found the unit cost and the line amount and through that calculated the um, uh, the quantity. So why don't we capture the quantity? Now we're here. So uh, let's do that simply by using the right mouse button on the caption quantity and the left mouse button on the value. Clicking in recognize fields, please notice that the five down here are currently not recognized through caption. It's calculated, but when I click recognize, you'll see that the five are now captured. So it's not calculating longer. The comment is gone, and we have recognized all the data levels we, we, we want. Hmm. Except for I would like to have our order number up here also captured. So um, I will place my cursor anywhere in, in, in this line, this first line, and then point to my order number. And how to do that? 
the, the easiest way is to hold down your control key while selecting, left clicking on the value you want to capture. Boom. And then a field guide, template field guide pops up. So what do we want to do here, Mikkel? Yes, I want to add a field, but is it an existing one from my master template or do I want to create a brand new one? Oh, let me do one from the template because I want our order number. We have that already. But if I didn't have the, the field in my master template, I could create it straight away through this, this little guide. Order number, yes, add that. Boom, there we have a finish and done. Order number is added as a column. You can see the values captured. So what happens when I click recognize fields? Then I get the other one also captured. And I did this without using a caption, without using a column marker, simply by clicking, linking the value to the, the record that I'm working with. So I was on my iPad line while working with the, the order number for that line. I could, do, do, I could have done this, the same for my mouse line, simply by marking this one instead. This I really like. But there's another thing I'm not so, not so fond of. That is the these extra text words I got uh, included here. So I I can't convince the AI to change this unless I did some regular expression. I could do this on this field, but instead I'll show you how to handle it through manual recognition because there we can do some some more um, fun stuff. So let's switch to manual. And switching to manual, I have to go in and do a uh, recognition of where the columns are. You know, quite normal stuff. Description is here. I have my order number. No, there's no real column I can use here. So quantity, no, it's down here below my my uh, my price and unit cost. That should be possible to capture, I guess, by doing so. And then we have the line amount out here. So. Oh, wait a second. I get a bunch of suggestions now. So the manual suggestion, uh, the manual uh, recognition goes in and trigger the, the AI to look at the, uh, the the data that we have in our document and say that use the AI. That's straightforward. It finds everything. Uh, you might need to disable the, the requirement for the field number. We saw that before. But now it says also enable line catches to span multiple lines. What is that? Show details. So with this activated, Dummy Capture will scan multiple lines for all the required fields belonging together. So yeah, why don't we try that and see that something goes on? And there we have it. I have my order number captured. I have my um, quantity captured because moving from the AI to my manual, we still keep the link the configuration that we did on, on our AI. So moving to manual, Dom Capture knows what to do. And due to my configuration and the document structure, it suggests to add and activate certain um, uh, certain suggestions. This is quite cool to me. This is something that I've been playing around with a lot. Uh, and uh, this is going to be uh, the next Valentine's gift for my wife. I'm pretty sure of that. Let's uh, just for the fun take another document and uh, try this out. See, you have a bit more complex document here with more lines and two pages. And uh, let's do a, um, a document card uh, look up here, see what we have. Uh, yeah, wake up machine, there we are. And go to the AI recognition. You'll see that uh, we, we simply get a lot of information. This has been recognized, it's not calculated, this has been recognized, and this is also recognized, even though the data are not on the same line as our IT number and description. And what I want to do here is to uh, get the order number. So uh, I place my cursor somewhere in this line area, hold down my control again, and just left click on my order number. I see this is my order number being found up here, and left click with the control or, or right click will do the do the same, we're going to look at that in a second. Next, and I will have my, you know, the drill, our order number, and next and finish. Then we have recognized this one. So let's try to get the lines updated. Here we are, recognize. Boom. 
we found another one. But, oh, Megan, wait a second. Why is it empty here? Ah, when looking at the line, so line number two, the 200 doesn't have a order number. No, that's because this this vendor, uh, this supplier, um, only writes the order number for the first line in this group. So I have to go in and make them a capture aware of this that reuse the value from the previous record, the previous line. So let's do that. Let's go into the order number field, adjust it and say, I want to, when the value is empty, to use a previous line value, meaning that when I cannot find the order number, take the order number from the line above. Let's try that one. And then we should see some updates down here when I activate the recognize fields. Cool. Wow, there we are. Also on page two, where we don't have an order number for this position 400, we will get the order number filled in here. That is great. Let's do the last uh, field. I want to recognize this EN UPC number and uh, let's do it from the first line and say, I want to do it by caption while being in AI. So I will hold down my control action and say, I want to add a new field based on this caption. So again, right click, choose this one, this will be my DJN number and next, finish. And now the column is Showing up here in my uh, line list with the with the marked uh, caption, and I can go in and left click the value I want to recognize and do the recognize fields, and there we see we have all the lines uh, having a a uh, big number added to them. So moving around in our um, world of line uh, recognition is much more fun and way easier with so many more possibilities. I have one uh, last thing to say about the line recognition, and that is uh, all this is made available through a new code unit. This is a bit technical, but I'm trying to um, get through the message uh, to you here that we have a new code unit, code unit called CDC Line Capture 2.0. And all new templates that you create from this day on, uh, from the master templates will then use this code unit. Meaning that when you upgrade your pieces, sorry, your Dharma capture, you will get uh, your master template uh, code unit field for line recognition updated with this value. Whereas all your existing templates for the individual suppliers and vendors will keep their existing older code unit. We don't want to change the recognition uh, unless um, desired by you. And you can do that. You can go into your existing templates for the different vendors and replace the old line recognition code unit with the new one. But please note, it is on your own responsibility because you could have a negative effect on the recognition. So if that happens, you can always reapply the previous code unit, the existing one you have today, and that will restore the functionality 100%. But Mikkel, where do we do that? And how do I do that? But well, quite simple, go to the template card for that specific vendor, go to the code units fast tab at the bottom of the page and look at the field line capture and replace the value there, look up the value and, and uh, choose the CDC line capture 2.0 code unit. You can also read about this in continue docs if you want to know how to, to uh, go through this procedure on selected templates. Well, that was a lot of uh, great news about line recognition. I can hardly breathe now, but we have even more great news about documents and how to recognize those because it's time to time for the time for the e documents. And what is this e documents part? You probably heard about that in 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 uh, newsletters, in uh, in LinkedIn uh, posts, and other places that we have released e-documents for document capture, and that is, as it says here, a platform for handling managing electronic documents, also known as XML files. It runs through this continued delivery network (CDN) um, for short, and uh, it allows us allows you, everybody, to send and receive documents. 
until today, you can only receive documents into Domain Capture. Now Domain Capture can also send information to uh, external partners. Sounds complicated. So how do I get started? Well, first of all, installing Domain Capture, running the setup guide, the config guide, will automatically give you the full configuration. You don't have to do much configuration other than onboard yourself using the continuous delivery network. It's so easy. And the best of all, it's included in the inset in essentials module. I can hardly say it. Included in the essentials module. There we had it. If you want to read more about uh, what uh, eDocuments can do and what's in the for you, then look at uh, our docs. And you can also take a look at the continuous benchmark sheet where we have a detailed comparison of our e-documents uh, against the Microsoft e-documents functionality. But of course, you're going to see this today, and I'm not the right one to do the presentation because with me today, with us today, we have uh, my great colleague, Christian Mukano, who is the expert and the master of XML and e-documents. Thank you, Mikhail. Really nice presentation. I really love that AI. Um, it's going to be a shame when I'm uh, when I'm going to show what e-documents can do. But Ooh, yeah. uh, <laughs> let's look at it. Uh, good, good. Let's let's stay a bit on this slide, uh, Mikhail, um, mm. because I want to give a bit of an intro of uh, why e-documents. Um, well, there is a big reason, and um, that is. As we can see in all countries, especially in Europe, uh, there is new legislation coming that is starting to enforce this. And of course, we want to be um, ready for when that happens. And uh, we can see different uh, different countries uh, like Denmark, for example, where they take a different approach. They take the uh, financial system approach and, and, and making uh, that to be able to receive the and send the electronic documents. We see companies, uh, uh, countries like Belgium that make it mandatory. Um, but we also see just like Denmark, um, um, there is this trend of creating your own format uh, instead of going with something more international like uh, the PEPL format. That means that we need to have a robust solution that can manage all sorts of uh, formats and that's where it gets complex because uh, as we will see in a, in a second it's not anymore just about e-invoicing yes e-invoicing will be uh, mandated to be mand mandatory soon but uh, next to follow will be all the other documents from the purchase to pay flow um, we have a lot of information our docs regarding uh, managing um, electronic documents in different countries, so I invite you to, to go there in under document capture. Uh, I think it's uh, getting started and then managing uh, electronic documents to see how we can help you and what the legislation brings in your specific country. Um, as you know, Continia is uh, following this quite uh, quite heavily. Uh, we're we're having a big focus on this, as this is the new world, um, and we are what's called an Pebble access point. That means that we can uh, send. Uh, and receive PEPL documents through the PEPL network. Um, recently, we've also um, uh, got the capabilities of sending and receiving PEPL documents in the Netherlands and also New Zealand uh, as they come as a package. Uh, furthermore, we are also part of the NEMHANEL, the Danish NEMHANEL network, so you are covered by us and we will support among the way, we will support more and more networks um, that, uh, that our partners and customer need. Good, let's move to the slides, Mikkel. I only have one slide, uh, but I'll talk a lot, so uh, bear with me. <clears throat> so what can uh, Continua eDocuments do? Um, well, 
before we had uh, we had XML import that could uh, do only one part, and that is in the middle of the screen there, receive purchase invoices uh, electronically, and that was um, that was uh, you could also import it via email and via um, a folder, uh, or of course via continent delivery network. As you can see with continent documents, we expand this into uh, more uh, document types um, through delivery. Uh, to continue delivery network and besides the document types we also have their corresponding responses so let's look at a bit of on the flow and i will show uh, this uh, in a second so if we start from the buyer side um, we will send a purchase order electronically through continuous delivery network and the, the different formats we have there. Then on the seller side, we will receive this sales order, of course, register it uh, using uh, the document journal. Then we have also the possibility of sending an update to this order. So for example, if the um, prices has changed or an item is out of stock and so on, we can change, we can send also those updates through continuous delivery network. And of course, on the buyer side, we can receive this change changes, making it easier for us to be prepared when the when the purchase invoice uh, is um, coming or to prepare for us when, when items are not in stock on our seller side. Of course, at some point, uh, we the seller must get its money, so it will send the sales invoice again to continue a delivery network electronically. That will be received on the buyer side, um, registered, and then as an extra step, we also have the possibility of sending this invoice updates to let the vendor know where exactly this invoice is if it's accepted paid and so on and so forth this is just the beginning um as this we see as, as the most important but in the different networks like pebble and nemhandle we also have the catalog flow where you can send and receive catalog we have of course the shipment advice um and we have an even more advanced uh, um, order uh, flow where we could basically as a buyer respond to the update made by the supplier enough talk let's see how it is easy it is to, to do all this um oh yeah as a as a small um, um i can see that there's those the animation going um if you receive today any um, XML document, as you know, we, we support a lot of them in document capture on the purchase invoice side. Um, if you still receive them by, by email, they will continue going that way. Uh, E-documents for now is only uh, working with continuous delivery network. So let's see um, how easy it is to, to onboard ourselves and actually use this so i'll just go here and i'll just share my screen hope you can see it i take that as a yes so as i was as i was mentioning um you can find this article on docs um, under document capture, getting started and managing electronic documents. You can read uh, more about the different uh, the different countries um, and what the legislation and how do we support that. Perfect. <clears throat> so let's look as as uh, Mikael mentioned, everything is uh, for your documents is set up. The only thing that you will have to do is, of course, onboard yourself. So um, you do that uh, very simply. Just search for continuous delivery network onboarding. This will open up a wizard. In this case, I'm running uh, Pebble, um, but of course, for Danish uh, customers, um, we will see also Nemhandle available here. Then um, we have a bunch of information that uh, some of it is out of field and some of it we need to, to fill in um, and I'll explain it very quickly. The first two fields are used to identify ourselves in the different networks. So for example, here we have a type called VAT and then the actual VAT number. Then we have information about the company, so you as a as a participant. Then we have um, who is actually registering uh, this, uh, who's doing this registration, the customer contact, and the reason why we need all this uh, document do information is that 
in the Pebble network or the Nampanel network, we need to uh, do some background checks on uh, on the company to make sure that we don't uh, register companies that want to send uh, fake invoices. <clears throat> Once I fill this uh, this information, I can gen then just to choose the document types I want to receive. I'll just uh, choose that I want to receive um, uh, purchase invoices in the purchase category. Press next. And I can see that if I was already registered, I can see um, uh, where am I registered. But of course, I can, uh, forgot to change that uh, VAT. Of course, I'm already registered. But if you're not already registered, you can uh, you can just press finished. If you're already registered, you have to re register yourself before you can uh, do this uh, registration. I press finish, and now basically I'm uh, almost ready to go. As you can see, this new uh, participation is pending approval. That means that our team will look at the information you've submitted, and at some point you will be connected. Once you are connected, then you can start setting up your vendors to uh, send um, electronic documents to them or your customers, of course. The first thing you need to do is to choose the Continua eDocuments document sending profile, which will allow uh, the standard to work. Then here in the bottom, we have the eDocuments group, and here we can choose Pebble. We can choose the... Uh, that was an unfortunate. I think it's a bit slow. Maybe the refresh wasn't a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that made it even slow, but I'll just uh, switch to this. I don't know what's happening. I can see I'm in edit mode. I'm not allowed. But you can see that um, I can set up the participation and I can send how uh, I can set up how the vendor is registered in, in the network so I can send that to him. Good. Let's look at the flows. Um, so I have this uh, PowerPoint still here. Uh, let's let's take a quickly look at it. So what what I will demonstrate um, quickly is we will take the buyer side first. So we will go to sending a purchase uh, order, receiving the order update, receiving the purchase invoice, and then sending this invoice update. Then we will switch roles on the seller side and. Um, see how we can receive and register a sales order, send the order update, send the sales invoice, and receive the invoice update. So let's go first on the buyer side. We can see I have this uh, e-customer uh, company. I'll go ahead and go and purchase orders. I already prepared an order, which is for my e-vendor that is already set up. I have the lines that I need from him, and then I will just go and press send. Once I press send, this is the standard uh, standard send button. In Business Central, I can see electronic document through Continuous Delivery Network. I press OK, and then it tells me that this was sent. I can also see this e-document status uh, that is telling me that it was sent. I can press on it. And this is where we show in a centralized way, no matter what format you're you're sending or receiving, and we are showing the data in a more user-friendly way. Um, so we've created a set of uh, records <clears throat> that can hold this e-documents data in a in a nice, friendly way. So now, basically, I've sent this uh, this purchase uh, order to my vendor. Let's go and look uh, on what I have to ready to import here. I have a purchase order ready to import a document in this category, and then I have um, another document in in uh, purchase. Let's look at the file. Um, of course, it's an XML file, as you all know, and it's it says something about order response, but I cannot quite read anything. So let's just uh, import this. And I can see I also have a purchase invoice, so I'll also import that. So now let's look at what we have here. 
We'll start with the purchase order. So as you as you know, we've sent this purchase order, and now, as you remember the flow, we're receiving what's called an order response. And this is basically showing me the changes that the vendor did to this uh, to this order to the, to my purchase order, and I can go on the document card and I can see okay, but he's changed this item and he accepted this item. As I can see, there's no modification. Again, this only shows the the modifications. Then I can see that I'm missing a translation for this. I will just uh, uh, put it on. I can also press on this preview order changes to see exactly what's going to change on my purchase order so I can see my initial two lines and then how the purchase order will look after I press register. So let's go ahead and do that. I will then press register and by magic, well, not magic, but code, uh, my purchase order is updated. And now I'm now ready when the vendor is sending uh, the invoice, I'm ready to fully match this because I've changed the purchase order. So in theory, if I could uh, just put this template to automatically register, I shouldn't do that much. So you can see here, as you remember, I had two documents to import. One was the purchase order update, and uh, the other one is the invoice. And you can see that uh, document capture um, uh, at the moment of importing the invoice didn't have the changes to the purchase order. What I can do now is actually just recognize fields. This will just uh, look into the system, see, okay, but now the purchase order is actually uh, changed. And it, of course, completely matches with my purchase order. So I've done a few clicks. I haven't actually even got into the details of the, of the lines and I'm ready to register my invoice. Once I've registered, of course, I always will always see this e-document status on all the documents uh, that I can send or receive uh, with the e-documents. And I can go and see, OK, but what actually happened here? Um, and I can see that um, I had an order, then I had an order response that changed something, and then now I have an e-billing, uh, which is the invoice. Uh, I can always go inside and see more details about it, see the data if I'm uh, if I'm uh, curious. <clears throat> but the last thing in our flow was to actually notify our vendor that um, this invoice um, has some sort of status, whether it's accepted or, or, or not. I can automate some of these responses uh, by going to Continua eDocument setup. Um, I can see here e-billing responses, and I can automate some of these responses to be automatically sent. For example, uh, send an in-process when we're importing in document journal or when registering. I can send accepted when I'm releasing or when I'm posting uh, and rejecting, of course, when I'm rejecting. That is part of the automation, but of course, I can also do it manually by using our send electronic confirmation button. When I press on it, I will actually see um, a list of the possible status for this format. I will, for example, here say accepted. And because this responses, this invoice responses need a bit more information, usually uh, we open this again, this nice e documents page where I can see that the e document status is uh, telling me that it is in draft. So it's not sent yet because I might need to do some changes. So the way that we've built this is that it looks at the format and already knows what is possible within this format. So for example, I can say that I am conditionally accepting this invoice. And of course, I have to give a reason. And you see, these, these are Pebble specifics. Um, with a nice description uh, also from Pebble telling helping the user into sending the right um, the right e documents. And this will go both for the invoice, for the orders, for everything we send as e documents. This will be the new thing. So here I can say, uh, I don't know, uh, not recognized. Uh, let's talk. I will go just for the demo and delete actually a field. Uh, I don't know what 308 is. Um, and I'll, then I'll try and uh, send this uh, electronically. I can see immediately that my document status is not valid. 
and I can go to my validation log. So what the system does is, is based on our uh, eDocuments XML structures, it senses what fields are mandatory and what are not mandatory. Um, and it tells me here that reference document type code is mandatory. Oh, so this field that I just removed was actually mandatory, so I'll put it back. Now let's imagine that this was also validation error in when after we've sent, then we can of course do exactly the same and then press recent button. And at this moment we've sent the document in the network. So this is how easy uh, you can work with uh, with e documents. So that was the buyer side. Let's move over to the seller side. I don't have that much time and my business central went to sleep, but I'm back. Good. So from the buyer side, we've sent the purchase order. We've sent some um, some invoice responses. So let's let's look at it from the vendor side. So I can see I have two uh, documents ready to import. Um, fair enough. They're from Pebble. I'll just choose to import them. And remember, we have two documents. Um, but when I then import, I only have one document left. And I will tell you why, and this is an automation that it can be uh, removed, but one of these documents was the actual uh, invoice response from my customer. So actually, if I go to my posted sales invoices, I can see that um, that this uh, this invoice, the last invoice I've changed to 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 this uh, to to this customer, uh, he actually responded. You can see it's one minute ago. Um, he actually responded with something, and then I can go and look and say, okay, not recognized. Let's talk. Of course, I could, as you as you see it here on the list, I could get something like it's paid or it's accepted or maybe it's rejected. So of course, as I said, the template um, is set to automatically register because there's not that much data to look at. It's just a status and a message. Therefore, it's automatically put on the um, sales invoice. So that would be the update. Let's look. Um, Oh, I switched companies by mistake. Um, let's look at what we actually have to register now. Um, and that is, of course, the sales order that uh, that my buyer has sent me. I can, uh, of course, look at, uh, at the document card here. Um, and I can see the lines, um, but let's look a bit on on how uh, we can capture this data because I haven't talked about that and I know I only have five minutes left, so I'll just uh, hurry. If you remember XML import, uh, we had a lot of XML paths per format. Uh, you could get quite complex when, when we had to map those. Now what we have is purely capture from e-document and this will open up all the possible values that we already mapped from the e-document uh, itself, from the XML uh, itself using our framework. So I can see here all the data and I can see that sometimes I have multiple uh, uh, of the same type of data. And here you can see that uh, actually I wanted this contact name here and I can just press OK and the system will just, um, will just take care of filters and, and everything else. If I go back now, I can just recognize fields, and of course, uh, um, the data will be will be recognized. Furthermore, I have something called details, and this is because again we have a lot of data already that we can use, uh, and here I can see more uh, information about the um, the um, party, the the person that that is sending this. Uh, perfect. Let's go ahead and register. And then as with most of the sales order, things are changing. Um, so I'm going ahead and actually I'm doing, I'm starting to do changes on the sales order. I'm changing this price and uh, the customer already called me and said, oh, can you, can you just uh, give me a new pedestal also? 
uh, on that e invoice, yes, of course I can. Um, so we can see that they initially only ordered two items here in this beautiful uh, style view. I've added one uh, new item. Now, of course, I need to send this uh, response. Let's say that I didn't talk with uh, with my customer, but uh, maybe an item was out of stock and I had to replace it. That is also possible, but of course, prices always change. I can use the send electronic confirmation button and automatically uh, uh, that order change that we've seen on the, on the buyer side uh, is sent with the right data that, uh, that my customer needs to update their purchase order. I can, of course, um, automate this uh, by, again, going to e-document setup. I have sent updates uh, for e-order response, and I can put this on, for example, when registering the uh, sales order or on different other uh, places. In this case, I've done it, uh, I've done it manually. Good. Um, I'm ready to post this. See if I can uh, just find my button. It's here. I'll post this. And then, of course, uh, now it's time for me to send uh, the invoice. And I am, again, using the standard send button. And then to continue the delivery network, pressing OK. And then I've just sent this, um, this uh, invoice electronically uh, with just a few clicks. Of course, if there's anything wrong with validation or with sending, there will always be a status update, whether here, on this list, on the uh, actual card, and of course, on the uh, on the list uh, with, with posted documents. Uh, I guess that will be it. That was a great presentation, Christian. Let me let me share my screen because I have a few uh, more words to say here. Let's see. Yeah, um, your demonstration made it difficult for me uh, to choose what to give my wife on Valentine's Day next time. But um, I guess I have to go with the e-document now. So um, yeah, this is uh, what we've been through today. I will thank you all for being here and joining us, and uh, looking forward to seeing you the next time. Thank you.